Hello, this is Dr. Victoria Skirbo speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in snowy, cold Wareham, Massachusetts. Today I want to talk to you about the astrology and Kabbalah of the year 2018. Um, I did a uh, my first astrology Kabbalah uh, yearly last year in 2017 when we were in a one vibration. And now in 2018 the vibration shifts our focus shifts and um, things are going to be quite different so we're going to talk about that. The first thing I want to talk about is the universal year. The universal year is the number that you come up with when you add the actual number of the year. So 2018, 2 and 1 and 8 is an 11 vibration. 11 is a master number. It is master spiritual teacher number. And then if we reduce the 11, we get the 2 vibration. And so we need to look at both the 11 and the 2 uh, vibrational paths. Now, 11 is a master number. As I said, um, it's a higher vibration. It's a finer vibration. And so it's difficult often to hold that vibration. Even people who have master numbers in their chart have a, it's a challenging time. It's as if more is expected of us when we're dealing with master numbers. And so when you cannot hold the vibration of 11, then you, uh, you sort of move down to the vibration of 2. And it's not necessarily a move down. It's a little bit different. 2 is um, a number where we're dealing with relationship, awareness around relationship, we are dealing with uh, sensitivity. There's a lot of sensitivity in the two. It's an emotional vibration. So there's a lot of emotion. We will be feeling a lot of emotion this year, 2018. And in fact, the first day of the year, we had a full moon in the sign of Cancer uh, to start the new year. Like, boom, there it is. Emotions right there out in the open. And uh, Cancer, of course, is the sign associated with the moon, so it's a powerful position for the moon and certainly a deep feeling position for the moon. And so the year begins on quite an emotional um, emotional tenure. Ten I don't think I'm using that word right. Uh, emotional feeling. And so I want to talk about where the 11 falls on the Tree of Life. I'd like to talk about the cards associated with the 11 and with the 2 because it tells you something about how to face this new vibration on this new year. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we have the Tree of Life. Okay, um, This is the Tree of Life that we apply the numbers that we get from the Universal Year um, onto. And so the, we'll deal with the 11 vibration to start. Um, 11 on the Tree of Life falls right here on this path. Okay. Now before we get to what this path means and the connections and such, I want to point out that on the Tree of Life, uh, one of the ways to work with it is through the pillars. And we have three pillars. Okay. We have this here is considered a pillar, here and here. And so we have the middle pillar, which is the present moment. It's the pillar of transformation. We have uh, the pillar of mercy. Okay, and this is this is considered the masculine pillar, and this deals with um, the past. And then here we have the pillar of the future, and this is the feminine, the pillar of severity. And so we are. In this year of 2018, if we look at the 11 vibration, we are moving between these two pillars, okay, the pillar of the present and the pillar of the future. And so it's very much that in 2018, we are, within the present moment, building the future. And that's how we, so, so it, to a certain extent, there is an envisioning of the future in this year. Now the 11-2 vibration here on this path is associated with the sign of Libra. Okay, 11 and Libra. And the card, which we'll look at a little bit later, um, the tarot card, um, the justice card. 
And so there's a need for balance. All these issues of relationship, there's a need for balance. There's a need for fairness. There's a need for justice. Okay, eleven is the uh, in the tarot. The justice card is cosmic justice, and so there is a sense of the um, scales of justice being um, balanced out. Now, as far as the sephirith or the circles, oops, excuse me, I just dropped my pen. I have to use my finger. Uh, the sephirith that are activated on this path. We have here in this in the middle pillar we have Tippereth and then here in the uh, pillar of severity we have Gabura. Gabura is associated with the planet Mars and Tippereth is associated with the Sun and so anything going on between Mars and the Sun or things going on with Mars or things going on with the Sun are highlighted because of the activation of this path as is uh, Libra. Now there is nothing at this time, uh, no planets in Libra, um, and so uh, except for when the Sun is in Libra and then when the Moon goes in Libra every month, uh, and then of course the the, uh, the inner planets will go into Libra. So at that time, and then Mars also has a, 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 a parry through Libra as through its retrograde cycle. So Libra does get activated and those times of the year will be uh, most potent because of the vibration. But there's no uh, transpersonal planets in Libra and there's no social planets in Libra. But we will have our, our sort of day in the sun, so to speak, uh, when things move through Libra. So we look at what's going on with the sun, what's going on with Mars. This year Mars is retrograde. Mars has a retrograde cycle in the signs of Scorpio and Libra, both the signs of relationship. Um, Actually, yes, is that right? I'm sorry, that's wrong. It's actually occurring in the sign of Aquarius and um, Aquarius and Capricorn. Sorry about that. Um, the other two signs that I discussed, Venus has a retrograde cycle this month and goes through. Uh, Libra and Scorpio. So we have Venus coming into this through its retrograde cycle. So relationships are going to be stressed. Stressed in that it's stressful and stressed in that that's where we have to put our energy. Um, the chakras associated with these two sephirith are the throat chakra here and the heart. And so to a certain extent this year we are speaking from our heart. It's really about coming from a heart-centered place. It has less to do with the mind. It's not really about the mind. It is about the heart. Now, if we look at the, sh the chakra system, it's within the throat chakra, excuse me, let's try to say that ten times quickly. It's within the throat chakra that we allow uh, divine will to move through us and to speak through us and to create through us. We create in the throat chakra through the vibration. And so your words are going to hold a lot of import this year and you can create with your words so you need to be very careful with that. Of course, Kabura as a sephirith is associated with instant karma. So your words will have import and your words will have consequence. So be very careful about what you say and how you say. Um, last year there was a lot of fighting back and forth, a lot of finger pointing. This year it's more about cooperation or the necessity or the need for cooperation. So to sit down across the table from another person and really kind of get to the core issue. And we'll have plenty of time to do that uh, as the year progresses. And then we have the sun here. And so we got to look at the eclipse cycles. We'll look at all of this uh, probably in more than one video because I don't want this to go on for too long. Um, so we have the heart chakra, we have the throat chakra, we have uh, Mars and our actions that we take, we have what we speak and the importance of what we're saying. And then in the heart chakra it's really about connecting with the inner child, it's about connecting with the Christ consciousness. Now we have to remember that the north node of the moon at this time is in Leo and Leo's ruling planet is the sun. And so our evolution at this point is to move in the direction of the heart and let go of the mind. It's, it's, it's less about the mind and more about the heart. Okay, so that is, a, that is a direction that we need to take. 
And um, so that's the 11 vibration. Now let's look at where the 2 falls on the Tree of Life. The 2 falls on the Tree of Life right here. Okay? And that is the path of the High Priestess, if we look at the tarot. And it is associated with the moon. And of course we know that the moon was full on the first day of 2018 in, its, in the sign of its rulership. So it's a powerful it's a powerful energy. It's a sensitive energy. The moon is, is, is how we react and respond to life. It has to do with habit patterns, especially habit patterns about relating. We were going to have to sort of look at that and see how we can better relate to each other and not fall back on patterns that no longer serve us. So, so that will be uh, an issue as well. The other thing about this path is it's right up the center of the tree and so it's in the path of transformation so we have an opportunity to really transform the way we react and respond to life the moon um, this is the path of the high priestess so it is to know and to keep silent so the less said on a certain level the better especially when it comes to he said she said tit for tat you did this he said that that's not going to get us anywhere okay it's not about that it's more about observing and relating and when you do speak make sure that your words are said with love and kindness because what you give out this year you will get back because this is the year of cosmic justice the other thing about this path is it connects the heart chakra with the crown chakra and so this path activated this year we have direct connection to source, direct connection to spirit. And so if you don't know what to say or if you're not knowing what you're feeling, just open up to spirit. This is a this is a great of course every year is a great year to meditate. But two is much more of a yin vibration. It's much more about it's more feminine. It's more attractive. And so meditation is about listening. Listening to your inner self, listening to your um your guides, your higher self, your uh, to God, goddess, whatever it is that you you call it. So we have opportunities for both uh, deep inner listening and uh, healing around relationships. Um, so let me talk a little bit about what Mars is doing, what the Sun is doing, and a couple of other important points about this coming year. I'll be right back. Hi. Okay, I'm back. So, um, there's a couple of major astrological shifts that are starting this year. And uh, one of them is, uh, of course, we have the retrogrades. We have three Mercury retrogrades, which is normal. Mercury retrogrades are all on fire this year. And so, it is about inspiration. And then when we have Mercury retrograde, we have to review our inspirations, review our beliefs. What do we believe? What do we uh, instinctually know? What What is in our hearts? These are all the things that we need to work with because we're dealing with the energy of fire. Venus uh, has a retrograde cycle. As I said previously, uh, Venus is retrograde in the sign of Libra and Scorpio. The Venus retrograde is occurring um, in, I believe it's October, October to November. And so we will be reviewing our relationships. Venus is our relationships, our relationship to ourself and our relationship to others. It's also our relationship to money. And in Scorpio, it's our relationship to debt. So we'll be looking at that as well this year. And we have Mars retrograde. And the Mars retrograde is especially potent because Mars is activated this year through uh, the 11 vibration. And there is a, a one particular uh, time of year where this is going to come to a head and this and this um, this path gets activated through Mars, through the Sun, and through the 11 vibration. And that occurs on July 27th when Mars retrograde makes its opposition to the Sun, and this occurs in along the axis of Leo and Aquarius, which of course is the axis where we have the North uh, Leo and the South Node uh, going through at this time. And so this is a fateful time. Oppositions are about awareness, 
uh, Mars is how are we exerting our energy and because Mars is an Aquarius it has to do with our energy toward the common good okay and so we have an opportunity to take stock the opposition between Mars and the Sun is really the highlight of the Mars retrograde cycle and so we come to a realization at that time and uh, this is also along the axis of love and so it is about love, love of self and love of others and um, that balance between those two things so that's also very important the other big thing that's of course I guess I'll go through all the signs Jupiter is moving through Scorpio uh, continues to move through Scorpio, changes signs, I believe it's in, uh, the end of October, into Sagittarius, which is the sign that it rules. But while in Scorpio, we are expanding all things Scorpio, which includes uh, bringing out the shadow. And the shadow, uh, especially around issues of sexuality and power. And so we can continue to see a lot of the um, Me Too stuff coming up and litigation perhaps around that and women finally finding their voice when it comes to this. Um, women have always been aware of it. Uh, I, maybe not all women, maybe some women have chosen to f forget, uh, but it's in there. <laughs> We've all experienced it. And uh, men are starting to realize to the extent that women uh, experience it and how it colors our not only our relationship to them, but our relationship to ourself. Jupiter and Scorpio is about healing uh, sexual issues and our relationship with our own sexuality, whether we be gay or straight or somewhere in between. Um, okay, Saturn is now in Capricorn. That happened in December, uh, right before the, the Sun went into Capricorn, right before the winter solstice, I believe it was December 19th. Um, Saturn and Capricorn, Capricorn being its, uh, um, Capricorn being its, the sign that it rules makes it very powerful. Saturn and Capricorn requires us to grow up, requires, requires us to mature, requires us to become responsible for ourselves and for the situation that we're in. We may feel powerless at this time. We may feel like, how do we didn't get it? Oh, I didn't do anything to get in this situation. But the truth is, on some level, you, you have whatever actions you have or have not taken um, can get you into uh, the situations you find yourself in. And now it's time to sort of take responsibility for that and stop um, crying about it, really, and, uh, and move forward and start building the structures that support the person that you want to be and the life that you want to have and the world that you want to see. And Saturn's in Capricorn for... Um, about two and a half years. It may seem longer than that. Um, and the United States has its Pluto in Capricorn. So we will have Saturn on our Pluto. And then um, I believe it's two years later, we're going to have Pluto on our Pluto in the United States. And that's a whole nother video. Um, Uranus is changing signs this year. It is in Aries. It's at the end of Aries. And it's moving into Taurus, and that occurs on, I believe it's May 19th. It's in Taurus until November, and then it retrogrades back into Aries. Um, and then comes goes back into Taurus for the next seven years in May, I believe it is, of 2019. And so we get a taste of Uranus in Taurus this year. Taurus is an Earth sign. It's uh, feminine vibration. Earth is a female element. And uh, Taurus deals with money, and Taurus deals with security, and uh, or insecurity. And so there will be uh, disruptions of that, disruptions in money, disruptions in security. As an Earth sign, there could be seismic activities, whether it's metaphorical or actual. So we'll see a lot of that. A lot of Earth changes are going to be happening. Um, Neptune is still in Pisces. Uh, Pisces is the energy of dissolving. Neptune is the energy of dissolving. Pisces is, um, Neptune is the ruling planet of Pisces, makes it very powerful. The boundaries that separate us are dissolving. The idea of unity is here and is here to stay. Um, Neptune also, we can see great um, climactic changes with Neptune and Pisces. Um, 
tidal waves, uh, deluges, um, floods, you know, fires even. So uh, expect that, expect that that will be um, an issue as we move through it. And that's there, it's there for 14 years, so we have, um, I think it's out in 2026. So we still have plenty of time with that energy. And then Pluto is in, of course, Capricorn. And uh, Pluto moves through, through Capricorn this year it's moving into the last decan of Capricorn which is ruled by Mercury and so there's a transformation really of our mind and how we think um, it's been moving through the second decan which is uh, which is ruled by uh, Venus and so uh, through the second decan over the last few years probably since um, maybe 2000 and what do I want to say 2014 2013 it's been um, a reviewing our values but now as it moves from that to the next decade we go from values to to our mind um, to the Virgo decan and then of course as the Virgo decan it's really about um, fixing things and making things work better so we will so the structures that no longer serve will continue to move uh, to break down at the same time we have to start building structures that will uh, support our world view. So those are some of the things that are going on oh, uh, in 2018. Um, I think I'm going to stop it here because I think it's, this has been long enough, but I will have another one as things progress and things happen. Um, maybe we can talk about the eclipses because that's also important, um, but you can only do so much uh, at one time. So. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I look forward to talking a little bit more about this 11-2 uh, vibration year with you uh, at a later date. Have a great day, and uh, if you like the video, press the like button. Subscribe if you want to see when I, I do daily blurbs, so you can see me every day if you want, uh, or you could just see me for these monthly uh, videos. Have yourself a great day, and I will uh, see you soon. Ciao.